It's been a rough start to the 2022-23 men's basketball season for the Louisville Cardinals. Yet another one-point loss earlier this week, this time to the Appalachian State Mountaineers. 0-3 on the season. Let's be honest. Um, there are some serious adjustments that need to be made moving forward for the rest of the season, and we're going to talk about those and more on today's episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome in. Happy Thursday. You're listening to another episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast or watching it based upon what streaming service you're using. As always, I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. also do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports. I want to take this time to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. As I talked about in the cold opener, we're going to talk about the serious adjustments that need to be made for the Louisville men's basketball team moving forward this season. We'll also dive into the football side of things where the Cardinals are preparing um, a regular season home finale against the NC State Wolfpack. We'll talk about what's at stake for the Cardinals, also identifying the key players to watch for Scott Satterfield's team. Um before we talk about the basketball portion of the show, I do want to update you all a little bit on the programming side of things. I want to apologize um, sincerely for the lack of consistency in content. Um, full transparency, I have had multiple close friends, uh, close family friends have passed away um, in the past month. Um, it's been extremely tough to deal with. It's been brutal. It's been devastating. Um, I appreciate everyone that has reached out to me. It is definitely appreciated. Um, but I, I'm not searching for pity. Um, I'm not searching for anyone to feel bad for me. I'm just putting that out there so you all know that it's not a, a laziness factor or me just deciding not to uh, record shows. So I want to apologize for that lack of consistency in recording and publishing shows. Um, but moving right on into the content of today's show, we'll start out with the Louisville men's basketball team. They have uh, struggled to an 0-3 start the first time the Louisville Cardinals have lost the first three games of the season since 1986. All have been one-point losses. On um, Tuesday evening, the Cardinals uh, fell to the uh, Appalachian State Mountaineers. 61 to 60 at the KFC Yum Center. L. Ellis had a chance to win the game at the very end, but his layup did not uh, beat the final buzzer. Uh, and thus, the Cardinals now 0 and 3, looking at a tough trip to Maui, where they will face some um, pretty um, good opposition, beginning with the Arkansas Razorbacks. Um, so I think it's it's obvious to everyone that some serious adjustments are needing to be made moving forward for the rest of the season. But what adjustments are those? Well, I don't think that there is a clear answer. I think that there are a handful of issues that, um, you know, stem from the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, the work ethic, things of that nature. Um, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. I do want to discuss something that's irritating me that I'm seeing from the Lowell fan base. Um, and that is, that everything has to be so extreme. That's something that um, has been irritating me and making me a little frustrated. And it's crazy to me that people don't believe that two things can be true at one time. Um, that if you believe something, you can't believe something else and vice versa. So in this context um, of the current state of the Louisville men's basketball program, it's this idea that you can not support Kenny Payne if you are already criticizing the Cardinals. Um, I will say this. I think it is true that you can believe that Kenny Payne is the right guy for the job, that once he gets his players into this program, once he fully implements his system and gets his guys into this program, that the Cardinals are going to have a ton of success down the road. It's a rebuilding time. This was always going to be sort of a tough season. And you can believe that 
Kenny Payne is the guy. I believe that Kenny Payne is the guy. Um, but that can be true. And it's also true, in my opinion, that some criticism is warranted at this point. Um, that you can, you know, make some criticisms. I think it's acceptable. So I think that you can believe that Kenny Payne is the guy while also, you know, acknowledging that, excuse me, that the early season start has not been optimal and some things are just not living up to the standard of this program. So what I mean by that, um, I firmly believe that Kenny Payne is, is the guy. I think that once he gets his players uh, into this program, I think that, um, you know, with no more NCAA clouds uh, over the recruiting aspect of this program, there's no reason why Kenny Payne should not be able to get um, his guys into uh, this program. Um, and I believe that it, it's going to take some time. There is some rebuilding that has to be done. Um, he didn't necessarily inherit a great situation. The team was under 500 last year. So I think that you can accept um, you know, the fact that it's going to be a little bit of a tough and bumpy ride to start out with. And and I think most fans understand that. Um, but I also think that you can make some criticisms. Um, what we've seen so far, you know, in the games against Bellarmine, Wright State, and Appalachian State, um, is that you know, at a good amount of times, the effort level hasn't been there. Um, jogging back on defense, um, you know, lack of an offensive identity. Look, I understand there's going to be chemistry issues early on. Uh, these guys trying to gel together on the court. Um, but the lack of hustle on both ends of the court, um, that's been a little bit of a, an alarming uh, trend. There has been reports come out, rumors come out, that uh, the team hasn't necessarily been great practicing, which – kind of makes you a little concerned as well. And, um, I mean, it is what it is. I think that, you know, the serious adjustments that need to be made, uh, in my opinion, it's, you know, it's it's going to be – it's got to be a mindset shift. You know, it has to be, um, you know, getting back to that, um, you know, brand of Louisville basketball that, you know, epitomizes that work ethic and that hard work, the, you know – you know, getting back on every play, it's, you know, simple things like that. And I'm not saying that they don't, that that's an issue at all times, but that's been a recurring theme over the first three games. Obviously it's still early. Um, I think that um, I would like to see more of an offensive identity. It seems like the guys are just uh, taking turns, trying to get into the lane. And if things aren't there, you know, kicking it out to an open shooter. And that really hasn't necessarily been a, a huge uh, area of success. Uh, defensively, I think that the team is getting better, um, but consistency throughout the game. I think that, um, you know, the team has been playing solid at the end of games, but it's something that they need to put together for all 40 minutes. Um, and yeah, I think it's early on. So I think that, you know, Sidney Curry will, you know, get back to where he was production level last year, but he has had a suboptimal start. So I think that, um, you know, you know, getting Sydney back on track, um, getting guys not named um, L. Ellis, Mike James, and Jalen Withers to you know consistently produce is, is going to be a focal point moving forward. Um, but with that being said, while I have gotten on this podcast just now and said that two things can be true at one time, you can agree that Kenny Payne is the guy for the future while also criticizing what we've seen so far. Because let's be honest, people realize that it, it was going to be sort of a rough season. Most people wanted the team to just um, get around the 500 level. Before the exhibition games, I'm sorry, not many people expected the Louisville to lose three games against Bellarmine, Wright State, and Appalachian State. So um, the notion that this team can't be criticized right now, I think it's, I think it's egregious. But also, what I think is egregious is, are people already calling for Kenny Payne's job. Like that blows my mind already. Three games in to the season, and we are calling for a head coach to be fired. Now there is. Uh, certain, you know, portions of the fan base that have, you know, basically said, you know, Kenny Payne's not the guy. Um, the recruiting hasn't been the greatest. Uh, what we've seen on the court is very, um, you know, lacking inspiration. Um, you know, he's not the guy. I think that the, the overreactions, there's a very fine line between criticizing 
and overreacting, right? So I think that while you can criticize, it's also key that we don't overreact and realize that, hey, look, you've got to give it some time, right? Um, you know, it's three games into the season. Have we seen some things that are concerning? Are there some aspects of the past three games that have been unacceptable? Well, sure. But also believe that, you know, the I mean, the season isn't over. There is still opportunity to get better, to continue to develop, to develop, you know, heading into year three. So, I mean, you, you've got to give it some time, in my opinion. I think that that's where things are standing right now. Some adjustments, some serious adjustments need to be made. But also you've got to have some patience here because Kenny Payne didn't necessarily inherit a great situation. Um, it's going to take some time for this team to gel. And, you know, let's revisit this conversation after the new year. You know, when the team has gotten a couple months to play together, to try to work through their early season woes because um, it's a marathon and not a sprint. Like I said, I think Kenny Payne's the guy for the job. There are some adjustments that need to be made. There are some things that have not lived up to global standard, but it's still early. Let's see where things are, um, you know, here in a couple months, even after next week in Maui. Let's see where things are there because I think it's going to be um, a journey that you have to, um, you know, kind of withstand the, 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 the bumpy um, trails in the road. So we will talk about what we would like to see from the team in the Maui Invitational um, early next week. Um, but right now, just be patient is my, um, my message. It's not ideal. Nobody likes to see Louisville lose three games, let alone to three mid-majors, but at this point, it's going to be a tough path. It's going to test some perseverance. I know it hasn't necessarily been the greatest. Um, you know, it hasn't necessarily been the greatest joy to be a Louisville fan over the past five years, but we've got to stick it out. So I um, wanted to now transition over into the football side of things, talking about what is at stake for the Louisville Cardinals. We'll do that here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Nugenics. Um, remember when winning felt easy? That's because when you were younger, you were at the peak of your testosterone production. What some have called the winner's hormone or the man hormone. Wouldn't it be nice to get that winner's edge again? and that old swagger back in your step, well, look no further. Um, if you want more energy to counter the uh, physical effects of aging, Nugenix Total T Testosterone Booster with Testophen will help you turn back the clock, re-energize your workouts, and get you better results at the gym while helping you look and feel like the man you really want to be. Uh, because Nugenix Total T boosts free testosterone that the aging process robs, you'll feel stronger, leaner with more energy and drive, and more passionate too. Uh, Nugenix Total T is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. It can help re-energize your life and get you back to the powerful, confident, good-looking warrior that you used to be. Get a complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total T when you text the word COLLEGE to 231231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenix Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator ever, with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast. College to 231231. Uh, texting enrolls you into recurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Uh, message and data rates may apply. Once again, I want to say thank you all for making Locked On the Louisville your first listen. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So transitioning over into discussing what is at stake for the Louisville Cardinals against the NC State Wolfpack on Saturday afternoon, senior day at Cardinal Stadium, the NC State Wolfpack, um, 24th in the country, both teams uh, trying to avenge a loss last week. The Cardinals lost, obviously, on the road to Clemson. NC State, however, um, like the Cardinals, fell to the Boston College Eagles 21-20. to um, so not a great performance um, in Raleigh for Dave Doran's team. Um, MJ Morris, the backup quarterback who took over for um, Devin Leary when he faced a season-ending injury. Rumor has it that Morris is also facing injuries of his own, 
and could very well be out for the remainder of the season. I don't think I've seen any confirmation, but it seems like that is the vibes that I'm getting from the NC State Wolfpack is that they believe that he likely um, won't play in this game. So um, I think that in terms of what is at stake, well, I, I think that you have the chance to get back to where you thought you were going to be in the preseason. Look, I said that the minimum amount of games that needed to be won this season for Scott Satterfield was seven. You have a chance to achieve that this week. I understand that NC State is banged up. They're facing some injuries, um, but it could still possibly present a ranked victory, uh, which would be a solid momentum builder, um, trying to get that momentum back that you had uh, before the Clemson loss and head into next week's Governor's Cup with some momentum, feeling confident and ready to take on the Kentucky Wildcats. NC State um, is definitely a winnable game. Um, with Devin Leary, it was probably one of the tougher ACC games on the schedule. Uh, the Cardinals right now are currently a four-point favorite, um, a 69.5% uh, chance to win, according to the ESPN analytics crew. Um, very, very similar in terms of statistics. They both uh, average in the high 20s points per game um, and allow under 21 per game as well. Um, but this is an opportunity for Louisville to not only get back into the win column, but really, honestly, I think that a win against NC State, barring a catastrophic blowout against Kentucky, um, you know, losing some of the recruiting class and losing the bowl, losing the bowl game in blowout fashion. I think that a win on Saturday against NC State pretty much guarantees that Scott Satterfield is back for a fifth year uh, with the Louisville Cardinals as the head coach. Now, granted, the Cardinals could go six and six, win the bowl game, or lose it pretty closely, and you can make the case that. He will still be back, but I think that there's no confusion. There's no doubt that he is back, uh, like I said, barring the unexpected, uh, if the Cardinals were able to beat the NC State Wolfpack. So I think that it's an opportunity to put a cherry on top for the second half effort. Obviously, if you beat NC State, that doesn't mean the season's over because you still want to see some progress against Kentucky. You know, let's be honest, it hasn't been close since Scott Satterfield took over. And um, this is a Kentucky team that literally just lost to Vanderbilt at home. So um, you'll have to see some progress there. I'm not saying that a win against Kentucky is required, but you have to look better than you have um, in, in previous years. This is just an opportunity, in my opinion, to get the team that much closer to, you know, building momentum for next season. Um, it's also a big recruiting weekend. A lot of uh, the commits are on campus, Ruben Owens, Pierce Clarkson, Aaron Williams. And in my opinion, the most important one currently is DeAndre Moore, the four-star top 100 wide receiver from the California state or the state of California, the California state, um, has visited Texas and Georgia in recent weeks. Um, there has been concern of him possibly flipping his commitment before signing day. Um, and that's kind of the territory that Louisville is in with um, you know going up against some of these big recruiting powers. So with more being on campus, this is a big opportunity for Louisville to try to reverse some of that backwards momentum and um, try to solidify that commitment with signing day basically a month away so uh, assuming that uh, he would be signing early so in my opinion you know I, I won't say that this is a must win game obviously a win would be huge a loss would you know take away some of that momentum especially losing two straight beating another ranked team would do wonders for the program's confidence the um the overall vibes around the program as a whole, it would be solid for recruiting because once again, you're showing uh, prospective commits that, hey, look, it wasn't a great start to the season, but we've turned it around. We've beaten Pittsburgh. We've you know demolished Wake Forest. We battled with Clemson on the road, and we just beat a ranked NC State team. So, um, you know, a lot of opportunity here for Scott Satterfield to solidify a fifth year, um, you know, build some more recruiting 
positive momentum and also some momentum going into next week's game against Kentucky. Speaking of this game against NC State, I want to talk about the players to watch for moving forward in this one. Um, those would be whoever starts at quarterback, Tyon Evans, um, and then defensively, I think you are looking at uh, players like Yasir Abdullah. And also, I kind of went back and forth with this one. Um, I think a player like MJ Griffin is another player to watch in in this um, you know respective game. We'll talk about those guys here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Bet Online, who continues to be your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, well, you can find those two at Bet Online. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting needs. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Final segment of this Thursday edition of the show, we are identifying and discussing the key players to watch for the Louisville Cardinals against the 24th ranked NC State Wolfpack. Um, I identified them briefly before the ad read. Um, that is whoever starts at quarterback, Tyon Evans, uh, MJ Griffin, and Yasir Abdullah. Um, frankly, I think that NC State is battling injuries, obviously could be on a third-string quarterback um, this week. But also, Louisville has a critical injury of their own. Malik Cunningham had been battling that broken hand in the first half against Clemson. He has what Scott Satterfield has referred to as a bruised shoulder and is listed vaguely as day-to-day. So his... Um, his status is up in the air. It seems like if my intuition serves me right, I would think that Brock Doman would be running out with the first team offense this Saturday, um, but not set in stone. So I think whoever starts at quarterback for different reasons is, is going to be a player to watch. If Malik Cunningham plays, how much will his health um, you know, affect the Louisville offense? And then if Brock Doman starts, it's can he um, continue to you know spread the ball around? Can he continue to show that he can lead this offense effectively? Can he show that he can uh, withstand teams bringing pressure off the edge and trying to blitz the hell out of the offense and force him into tough situations? Clemson did it last week, and you have to think that Dave Doran would be thinking the same thing if Brock Doman gets the start. You don't have that mobility aspect in the run-pass option that you have with Malik Cunningham, so the Louisville offense looks a little bit different. With the uncertainty at quarterback, I think that that means that Tyon Evans, assuming that he's healthy as well, I know that he had been battling injuries um, if he is healthy in this one, I think obviously, um, you know, his health would matter to, um, you know, how much it would affect the Louisville offense. But I think that explosiveness is definitely needed, um, in this one. I don't think, uh, he has been ruled out. Um, I do want to check that though, because if he is not playing, I'm going to feel very, very stupid. Um, but I don't think that there has been any word yet. On Tyon Evans, um, let's see. I apologize, I didn't have any um, updates on this earlier. But regardless, I think that Evans is a player to watch because I think that with the quarterback situation up in the air, this offers the Cardinals, you know, a solid security blanket and and allowing them to um, continue that strong rushing. Um, strength that they usually use so um defensively Yasir Abdullah with an inexperienced quarterback one of the best pass rushers in the ACC one of the best uh you know tackle for loss guys in the conference be a great opportunity for Yasir Abdullah to definitely leave his mark on this game whether or not he is converting those into sacks uh, getting pressure on the opposing quarterback would be huge to be able to limit that um production to um limit that um overall cohesiveness when it comes to um, extending drives um, and forcing them into some tough situations. Um, MJ Griffin, I think, has been one of the brightest spots in the secondary 
Um, over the past couple of weeks, he has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, the transfer from Temple has shown that he's solid in the in the rushing attack, but also um, as a uh, a defender in the back half of that secondary. Um, I think that he is doing a good job of being a ball hawk. Um, has had a couple of interceptions this season so far, um, and has made the most out of the opportunities as the back half of the secondary was a position of concern at the first half of the season. Brian Brown has elected to go with MJ Griffin more. And I think that Griffin has been um, a huge part of the defensive improvements that we've been seeing um, over the past couple of weeks. So um, players to watch, whoever starts a quarterback, whether that be Malik Cunningham or Brock Doman running back Tyon Evans, and also defensive end Yasir Abdullah slash linebacker, I guess you could say, whatever you want to classify him as, defensive end, edge rusher, linebacker, and uh, safety MJ Griffin. So um, tomorrow's episode we'll be discussing what Louisville will need to do to come out victorious against NC State, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. But, hey, that's going to wrap up this Thursday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.